Welcome, everyone. Um, this is a session about our new website from Bomb. And um, let me control the slides with different view. Um, and we will have two parts of these sessions. In the first half, we'll have Ben, the general manager from Bomb, to talk about custom lift delivery. Then in the second half, I will talk about the Drupal solution. Now it's all yours, Ben. Thank you, Josh. If we can go to the next one. Um, probably just want to introduce the, uh, uh, this presentation with uh, a little bit about the why, and in particular, why, why it was so important to get customers involved in the um, first part of the process. So if you don't already know, the Bureau of Meteorology is one of the most um, used websites uh, in Australia. Um, our brand is one of the most trusted and reliable uh, brands that provide weather, water and climate and ocean services to um, a broad range of customers, not only the Australian community, uh, the people on the street, but also quite sophisticated customers, um, either in industry um, or in um, sort of other government agencies. And I'm sure that there's a lot of uh, audience members that use our, uh, use our website um, for this or use, uh, use Bureau for this. Um, the most common way that our customers and the most, uh, um, I suppose the biggest coverage way that customers receive all this information is through our website. Our website's been there for a large period, uh, a long period of time. Um, and I'm sure all of you guys are probably smiling and seeing sort of all the great things that our website uh, does today. Um, but that's sort of one of the most important ways that we get to transmit and inform our customers about um, key services and products that we do have. Um, just moving on to the next one. Uh, Josh, please. Okay, cool. So on the right-hand side there, a lot of you might sort of see uh, the common pages that you have um, on our website today. So uh, many different styles, many different designs, many different ways to find information um, via, via our website, and it's really quite inconsistent from an experience perspective. Um, obviously, because it's been built organically over a number of years, it's been built in a way that... Um, does uh, have some vulnerabilities in it with stability and resilience. Um, and it's actually not intuitive at all. You know, one of our biggest findings from our customer research was that um, our customers have reams and reams or, or you know, files of bookmarks, uh, which they go to um, to almost navigate to different sections of the website. So it, it, it's been there for a while and it's um, and it's served, it's served its purpose and it will continue to serve its purpose, but in, not in its current format and current uh, look and feel. I mean, the, the, you know, we have sort of close to you know, over 100 million hits on the website per annum, a large amount of, uh, uh, you know, sort of, you know, if you sort of depend on who you're uh, talking to, it's one of the top 15 websites that are hit in all of Australia. It's uh, two thirds more traffic than any of our um, government agency peers. Um, so it's quite a popular uh, website. Funny enough though, if you look at the website, uh, there's probably about only 15% of some of the information in there that's hit 96% of the time. Um, and no guessing that that's sort of, you know, in particular the radar. Uh, it's one of, one, one of our most popular features. It's one of our biggest, um, uh, biggest branding, uh, unique branding um, issues that we've got with the Bureau. And we, we will continue to sort of uh, have that sort of branding moving forward. So what are we moving to and why? Next one, Josh, thanks. So our customers, what did they uh, tell us? Um, they wanted a more simple, modern um, way of looking for information and finding information on our website. Um, we know that the you know, radar and our mapping um, is almost like a cop, has a cult following to it. Um, however, though, we know just from a consumer perspective, uh, the way that you navigate and look for information on map has changed dramatically. And, you know, this is not us changing it, but the looks, uh, the, uh, the likes of, you know, Google Maps and, um, and Apple and the way that you sort of look and direct. Um, so we need to sort of also increase our, um, our standards today to make sure that we meet those types of expectations. Improve navigation. So our current website is almost departmental based. Um, i.e., you know, we have an avi aviation department or we have a water department and you'd go into that. We've moved that around to make sure that it's um, architectural based, uh, archetype based. So what our customers' jobs to be done um, and what are the most common things that they'll need to find to do their job. So it's a bit of a shift 
in the way that the navigations um, go into uh, navigate the way that the new website's going to navigate. Um, our sales service portal um, is an interesting one because we've got a whole range of customers, as I mentioned before, to sort of small to medium sized enterprises all the way up to quite important um, and large industries. Um, but what we need to have is as much self servicing as possible on the website because we just don't have that uh, workforce to um, have one sort of met or one forecaster for every customer. So it's really making sure, really uplifting uh, the new experience about servicing. Um, uh, servicing their needs through our self service portal, and you know because we're an AP, because we're moving to a modern um, architecture and API led architecture, we'll find better ways to sharing data, um, and obviously sitting on a quite a robust um, cloud native sort of infrastructure as well. Next one, so uh, what can you expect um, from our delivery process? And I'm sort of here talking a little bit about, or well, mostly about, the upfront process of designing or co-designing um, the look and feel on the website with our customers. And obviously that's a really big theme as part of the uh, DTA delivery process um, that um, we all, it is all good practice uh, to, uh, to, to utilize, to deliver to. Um, in addition to that, um, our, you know, sort of comprehensive customer discovery phase, which has been going on now for um, over 12 months, uh, was a key element to that and also delivering incrementally. Um, so we've got MVP that's coming out uh, early next year and then we'll start uh, and then from there we'll sort of incrementally deliver uh, more features as we go until we sort of get the whole website transitioned across. Um, so it's been quite exciting up until now. I think we're in the heavy build and uh, you know, just about to go into SIT testing for some of those MV MVP features. Um, and uh, really looking forward to the next phase and really looking forward to launching this really new look and feel um, next year. But I'll uh, hand over to Josh and he can tell you a little bit more about sort of the underlying tech that we're using. I mute myself. Thanks, Ben. Um, all right, um, let me jump to my slides. Um, for anyone who doesn't really know me, I'm Josh. I'm the solution architect from Accenture. Um, Accenture has been selected by the Bureau as a delivery partner in this really exciting journey. We selected Drupal, uh, mainly based on the three reasons. Uh, Drupal has been really popular in the government. There are a large number of Drupal websites in the Australian public sector, and a big part of it is website CMS clients. And that we do sense GovSMS. Um, we do leverage from GovSMS module and code review process to be able to do our module shopping. And Drupal offers huge flexibility that we allow our content author or CMS admin to be able to create a really complicated layout or landing pages from the UI. And also, um, Drupal offers its feasible entities that we leverage from the field to allow the content author to be, be able to configure particular paragraphs or widgets. And Drupal is open source. That means that it's free licensing. Um, we are actually leveraging from the really large global level of support from the security level and from the module and the code level. Of course, from the local Drupal community as well. Okay, um, we are using a progressively decoupled architecture. Um, for anyone who doesn't really know what is this architecture, I'll just give you a brief. Um, this means that we embed our React components and our React application into the Drupal theme layer, and we deliver the React application to the browser via the CDN. Each React component itself has its own logic and they can actually contact any external API services via the API gateway. In this way, uh, we have less traffic from the browser to, the, to Drupal. Um, we chose this architecture mainly from three perspectives. Um, from the performance perspective, um, we try to minimize the traffic between the browser and our web server, giving that huge amount of weather data are required in the user's browsers. So we try to leverage the traffic um, between browser 
and the API gateway from the bureau straight away. In this way, uh, we don't have a really high number of traffic directly coming to our web server, so we can protect our web server better. And from the de developer experience perspective, um, I'm pretty sure you all know that it's pretty hard to actually find a good Drupal developer in the market. It's even harder to actually find a developer who knows React and Drupal in the market. But with that said, if you become one of those, come to talk to me. Let's uh, let's have a coffee. Um, so that we try to um, have our dedicated team only focusing on what they're good at. So we have a dedicated React team. We have a dedicated Drupal team. React team doesn't really have any knowledge about Drupal's framework. And Drupal team doesn't really know anything to do with the React framework. Uh, what we do is React team can focus on their own education development. Once they are done, we embed the artifact into Drupal team layer. And we tell the Drupal developer which are the props. How do you configure the React component so that our website um, can be built with uh, blocks, uh, paragraphs with all the field, then we can pass the field value to the React. Lastly, um, from the component reusable perspective, all the paragraph types are reusable and available in all the content types globally in our website. And React components is independently available for any other React application to use directly. In this way, that we can reuse the entities that we create in this project in two perspectives, from the front end and from the back end. As I mentioned, we are building a really, really React heavy website with Drupal. So I will talk about how did we use React in Drupal from three points, uh, the bureau's design system and the widget we built and personalization. The Bureau has its own design system. What is a design system? Design system is a collection of components that defines the look and feel um, for the digital product. The Bureau has a requirement to have all the digital products from the Bureau to follow this design system. This design system is de developed um, in React framework. That means that when we create our Bureau's website, we need to use those React components in our website. The way that we use the React components in our website is that um, similar to the DTA uh, pancake library, if you know that, um, I still remember in the old time, um, we create a custom JavaScript library to actually wrap the component uh, made by React. And uh, that wrapper will be able to actually expose the HTML markup into the tweet. So that when our schema in our tweet file dump in a um, HTML markup, that our library will know, OK, we need to load this particular design system component into the HTML. Uh, in this way, uh, React is embedded in there. So with that said, um, the Bureau has its own app, um, Bomb Weather. It's using the same design system as well. If you are not using that, try that. I am pretty sure that's better than other weather map. We, so far, we created about 80 widgets. Uh, using the Drupal terminology, it's 80 paragraphs times. Uh, we're using the paragraphs to represent the widget. The way that we embed the Bureau's design system components into paragraph template is that, as I said, we use a wrapper library, and we uh, put the HTML markup into the tweak file. And uh, in the property of the, the div, we tell um, the library which component, what its component name we're going to use, and following the particular markup that we will actually load the um, components into the page. And using the paragraph with a lot of fields, we allow the content author to be able to actually pass in any parameters um, and then our schema will actually pass the value of that parameter to the props in React. Um, in this way, we can create unlimited number of versions of widgets in each page. I'm listing like three examples 
um, of the widget we're creating here. Um, as you see, there are really simple one, um, the static one, like the link list that we use um, the design system. Josh, you have only five minutes. Yes. All right, I got it covered. No worries, I'll speed up. So then we have a map and our forecast. Um, that's more complicated that we actually grab the uh, forecast and um, observation data from the Bureau's API. Uh, the logic is handled within the widget in React. Um, we are on the journey of personalization. Uh, the Bureau will keep continue um, offer the personalized service to different groups of audience, starting from the homepage. If you are the first time visitor in your homepage, you will see the actually the forecast details and observation details and warning details for the major city. Um, but you can actually set up your favorite location in the site, and we save it in the cookie. When you, when you come back next time, we will actually load all the details with the details of your favorite locations. So this as a start. We will keep learning from our user behavior and organizations in our website. We actually integrate uh, third-party services in Drupal. Alchemy is our CDN, and we, of course, we use Alchemy and purge to the dynamically purge the page uh, once the page is updated by the content author. We use Funnelback as a searching engine to be able to actually return multiple websites search results. Uh, when we are in the transition period, we will have the new and the old website running in parallel, and React Components is inter interacting with Funnelback API dependently. Uh, we use Google Tag Manager to actually learn from the user behavior, and we use the ID management to be able to allow the external user and internal user in future to be, to be able to log into the website using their own credentials. Um, I'm not allowed to tell the details about the ID management during the security reasons. Um, and the website is hosted in private cloud using infrastructure as code, and we do have the latest technology to design the CI/CD pipeline for dedicated React and Drupal team, uh, of course, we have a high percentage of the automatic tests. I think I just rushed to the end. Um, this is my uh, contact and Ben's contact if you have any questions. But I assume we have a couple of minutes left, and we're happy to take any questions. I can put in the questions now, um, Josh. Yeah. The, the first question is, how do you manage routes and paths? Are they served in Drupal, or are they still served in React? Uh, sorry, how do we manage which? Routes and paths. Uh, it's in Drupal. So uh, we we define our own uh, path in, in Drupal, and Drupal is able to be uh, able to tell which React components are in which page based on the URL. Then there is another one which says, is the personalization done Drupal side or front end? At the moment, it's done in Drupal side, uh, but in future, there's a possibility that we will do it in front end. What mix of front end, back end frameworks are you moving to in terms of JS frameworks, et cetera? Um, not sure about this question, um, but we we rely on the uh, React framework. Um, and in the future, we'll continue to work in React framework. Um, there's another one. Is there a pop in load effect? Do you have any SSR, SSG in React? Um, I can't really see the question. Um, where is it's, the question? It's in the, this, um, the live Q and A. Live Q and A. Um, no, um, we we do not really have the SSR SSG, um, but uh, we do have some popping load effect. Um, but it's all depend on the USC. Um, so as as we still continue developing the new website, uh, there will be new um, USC coming out. Okay, and probably the last one. Can you touch on BOM as a provider of data to other agencies, consumers, and how that works? Fantastic question. That's Ben's question. Yeah, we may have six seconds, but yes, we are uh, currently works mainly on the data, data to data type element, but moving forward would be more API-based um, uh, technology for sharing data between not only other agencies, but also third-party uh, organizations as well. All right, it looks like that's the end of all the questions. Thanks a lot.
And it was an awesome presentation. Bye. Thanks all. Bye.